I guess, woodcuts and uh, the way to detect uh, the quality or the hardness of, of the wood. Uh, before we start, I would just uh, like to say that uh, all those watching us live, uh, please feel free to ask your questions in the live chat on YouTube. At the end of the talk, we will address all of your uh, comments and questions in the Q&A session. Uh, with that said, uh, welcome and uh, I am leaving the stage. Thank you. Uh, should I uh, should I start? Yes. Okay. Uh, Thank you and uh, hello everyone. Uh, uh, thank you uh, for joining uh, this session. Uh, I am Imrita Sinanam and uh, I will present my talk uh, on evaluate machine learning models to better understand cutting in woods, uh, which uh, was my master's thesis project that I have uh, done at uh, Husqvarna. A little bit about uh, myself, uh, uh, already an introduction was given, but yeah, here I am, uh, MD Tasinanam, uh, working at h &M, uh, Group as a machine learning engineer. I have done my master's in computer science from Uppsala University and uh, did my thesis there uh, at Husqvarna. Uh, so a little bit about uh, Husqvarna Group. Uh, it is a Swedish manufacturer with a rich history of 330 years of innovation. Uh, their products are sold uh, over 100 countries, and they are the uh, global leader uh, in manufacturing robotic lawnmowers, uh, watering and smart garden systems, and light construction products. And they are also one of the leading uh, organization in manufacturing pro-handled solutions. Great. And then let's jump into the topic. Uh, what is uh, machine learning in woodcutting? Uh, what is this project? Uh, why uh, we decided to do this project and how we did it? Uh, I'm going to explain this. A little bit background. So here uh, you can see uh, uh, a couple of uh, images uh, of woodlock. Uh, and uh, 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 wood has a uh, uh, few properties. One of them is wood hardiness. Uh, uh, and uh, it uh, gets heavily affected by different defects and two type of defects that we have considered in this project are uh, knots and cracks. Knots are these dark circled uh, areas where the wood is really strong. So the cutting efficiency of a chainsaw uh, is low. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, here uh, in this image down at the bottom, uh, we can see a large crack. So that is also a defect uh, in a woodlock. And uh, in, uh, in this particular uh, region, the cutting efficiency of a chainsaw is the greatest because in, in a crack, there is actually no wood. Uh, so uh, in, in the laboratory, uh, according to the current practice, uh, what we do is we exclude these defected parts of a woodlock and we only consider uh, the parts of a woodlock that are clean and uh, uh, do not contain any defects. Uh, by defects, I mean knots and uh, cracks. Uh, but why? Uh, because here in this image, you can see how we place the woodlock in the laboratory and how the chainsaw performs the cut. It goes from top to bottom uh, and uh, while it performs the cut, because wood is a non-homogeneous material, uh, 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 the wood hardiness uh, var uh, varies. Uh, I mean, uh, when the chainsaw performs the cut uh, through the uh, woodlock, the energy, uh, We obtain uh, this data, how much energy was required, how much power uh, was consumed by the chainsaw. This data can only be obtained after performing the actual cut. So this is where our motivation lies. We thought, uh, so here uh, first, uh, uh, let me, uh, uh, you, uh, what you can see that we, uh, uh, we have two images here uh, of, an, uh, of in phases of a woodcut. 
and uh, uh, the left uh, in face uh, contains uh, knots and few cracks and the right in face contains uh, cracks uh, so this is uh, uh, this is the image uh, 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 that we worked uh, with so uh, uh, our data set contained images like this so yeah, uh, as I said, so uh, uh, after obta uh, obtaining uh, all the information about uh, the cut, uh, 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 we, we use that information in the lab to generate a graph like this, which tells uh, how the average efficiency of the chainsaw uh, varied while it performed the cut. Uh, so uh, here in this particular graph, we can see that uh, uh, the uh, average cutting efficiency of the chainsaw was initially uh, uh, low at, and at the end it was uh, also low. Because uh, in, in this uh, in-face image, we can see there are two knots at the top and at the bottom. Uh, so the wood uh, uh, is strong uh, in these parts, uh, therefore the cutting efficiency is low. and Around the center, uh, the cutting efficiency is uh, relatively high because of certain properties of wood, like wood cells density and other properties. Uh, and also, uh, if, the, uh, if the area is clean uh, around the center, then of course the cutting efficiency of the chainsaw is uh, high. So uh, we uh, so our motivation was that we can use a machine learning model to uh, get information about these defects and use this information to generate uh, uh, a graph similar to the one that I showed. And uh, that graph uh, can provide more information that we can use to facilitate lab experiments. So this was, this was our assumption. So our objective was to describe how the energy consumption varies as the uh, cut progresses. So basically uh, generate a graph similar to the one that I showed earlier uh, that we generated in the lab uh, after performing the cut and also use deep learning and computer vision to detect wood features, uh, wood defects, uh, uh, which will tell us, uh, which will give us more information about the hardness of wood and uh, using that information we can uh, gain more information so before we go with the machine learning approach we wanted to explore traditional image segmentation we wanted to see what was the problem with traditional image segmentation that prevented us to go with with this approach so for that we used uh, the opencv python uh, library uh, and using that here you can see that we have uh, segmented uh, the defected parts uh, from other parts of this uh, in face, but the problem was we could not tell if this segment uh, is a knot or a crack. So, and we needed that information. Uh, without that information, we wouldn't be able to proceed further. So that's why traditional image segmentation was not the not the way to go with. So therefore, we decided to go with machine learning approach. And for this project, we decided to go with Maskar CNN. Why? Because Maskar CNN is uh, widely used in computer vision uh, and uh, it is open source. Uh, it is, uh, uh, we used the Matterport Maskar CNN, which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which, uh, which is implemented in Python. Uh, and also uh, uh, in Maskar CNN, uh, with, there is, uh, one uh, algorithm such as uh, ROI align that preserves special information. It con uh, and it, it does uh, uh, instance segmentation. It generates a mask uh, uh, to the objects uh, of interest. So that's why we thought uh, it, is, uh, it is a good option to go with mask RCN. We trained our mask CNN model in AWS EC2 deep learning AMI, uh, which is a, a deep learning resource in the cloud. Uh, we, op uh, we obtained 500 real images uh, like this uh, 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 from, from our lab, and we created 1,500 more synthetic images uh, using a tool which called CocoSynth, which is also open source and can be implemented in Python. 
Uh, and then we used Keras API from TensorFlow, uh, and also we used Scikit Image for image processing. And using all of this, we trained our model, we evaluated our model, and uh, we generated the prediction result from our model. And this is the result uh, that we uh, that we got. So here you can see that uh, the uh, the model successfully detected, segmented, and classified the defected uh, regions or the defects. Then uh, we estimated pit's position. So pit is this uh, small dotted uh, area that can be often found at the center of an in phase, but it is, uh, uh, but uh, there are many a times uh, a pit can be located around the center, not exactly at the center. So it was a challenge to find the vertical position of the pit, and we developed uh, an algorithm using OpenCV Python. Uh, uh, and uh, that algorithm was able to successfully estimate the vertical position of this uh, of this pit. Then we calculated the percentage of knots at cracks at different vertical locations uh, of an uh, in an in phase. Uh, uh, so here, for example, uh, at this vertical location, uh, you can see that we have 10.23 percent knots uh, and 7.52 percent cracks. Using all this information that we obtained so far, we were able to generate a graph similar to the one that we uh, saw uh, earlier, the one that we generated from the lab after performing the cut. So our initial goal to, was to uh, uh, generate a graph similar to that, uh, sim uh, like this, uh, which describes the cutting, e cutting efficiency of the chainsaw. And uh, we, we were able to generate a graph like this before performing the actual cut. To conclude, uh, we estimated pit's vertical position, then we calculated the percentage of knots and cracks present at each vertical position, and then we estimated the average cutting efficiency, uh, most importantly, before performing the actual cut. And this, uh, uh, this information, this uh, estimation can help to facilitate uh, lab experiments uh, further to automate uh, the cutting process of the chainsaw. So future work, we have trained our model with, uh, uh, with uh, real images and synthetic images, but we had only 500 real images in our data set. Uh, so in future, uh, having more real images from the lab will certainly increase the accuracy of the model. Uh, we only considered uh, uh, knots and cracks in this project, but there are other types of defect uh, that can be found uh, in a woodcut. Uh, so we can also consider that in near future. We can also try uh, other models such as unit uh, to see if we can uh, uh, get better results. Uh, I would like to acknowledge uh, the people who helped me a lot throughout this project. Uh, and yes, that's that's it. Thank you so much. Uh, I will now welcome questions. Alcine, thank you. You've uh, actually it's a it's an excellent talk, and uh, you've actually uh, done your best because this is the last talk of the track, and you kept it short. So Thank this you. makes people on the real conferences very happy usually. Um, so I have a, uh, the audience, please uh, ask your questions. We still have quite a few minutes to answer them. And I have a bunch of questions myself, actually. Um, so first, uh, what kind of augmentations did you, did you do? Because you, you have, uh, you had like 500 images and you've produced 1500. So it's only triple. Uh, maybe there are some augmentations there that could increase the number of images tenfold. Uh, so uh, we used uh, transfer learning. So uh, uh, so we did not train our models uh, uh, from from the scratch okay. on on only these uh, uh, images that we had mm -hmm. in our data set. And uh, uh, apart from that, uh, we trained, uh, we first uh, uh, experimented with the real images, like only with those 500 uh, real images uh, that we had. And then uh, we also trained, uh, experimented with the 1500 synthetic images that we created. And then we 
combined these 500 real images with 1500 synthetic images and uh, 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 and uh, enriched our data set with 2000 uh, images uh, and then we also experimented with, with that data set and then we compared all the results and we tried to see which one gave us the better result and uh, so you had the percentage of these 2000 images as a validation set right yes exactly okay okay um but makes sense uh another question from my side why then you did not include a pitch as one of the objects to segment uh -huh. well if i go to the yes uh, let me show you uh wait how do i do this like this yeah. yes here so so here uh, you can see this pit is also a cir circular object yes and and not is also a circular object so okay it's somehow conflicted like uh -huh. uh, so, so you did try this but it yeah, didn't work yeah, yeah. okay it, it didn't uh -huh. work. yeah it, it makes sense especially if you use uh, binary like uh, grayscale images yeah. it's a very interesting point actually cool but um, uh, then how does it so you you have trained the network on on the cuts right and the um, saw it i mean you you have so, but 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 when you you are sewing something, basically you see from this. So you train from this side, right? Mm -hmm. And the saw sees only the, this side of the log. Uh, uh, how, so how... Let me go back to another uh, slide now. Uh, is this is something I. Yeah, absolutely, great question. So here, this is the interface. Uh, uh -huh. uh, we 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 have taken images of this uh, interface, right? Exactly. Yes, you see this. Yeah, yeah. and. So consider this knot, right? So the interface is there. Ah, okay. So when the knot is here, so uh, you can also uh, assume that this knot will, uh, it, it can be visible. So mm -hmm. consider that the knot is here. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry for the- uh, No, it's, it's, okay. it's great. Yeah, so the knot is here at this position and it, it, you can see it from in, in front because the knot, it's not like only it is on this side. It it, uh, it can be visible from it, here it as is, well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Good. Uh huh. Uh, interesting. Might be. I mean, I would wonder if uh, if images from the not from the face side but from the side side right could yes. be added and in, improve the performance. Yes, absolutely. I mean, we can also experiment with that thing too. Uh, but for this project, like we already uh, were uh, doing uh, similar kind of experiments with uh, this type of images from the front side. Mm -hmm. uh, the image is taken from the front side. So we opted to go with those images. Okay. And well, because it's, it's... other reason was that because the chainsaw was performing the cut from from this angle, like uh, it was mm -hmm. performing a cut from this top to bottom, and a cut is not generally this much thick. Um, I mean, uh, mm -hmm. here uh, it's only for the illustration, but it's it's not that thick. Um, it's oh, okay. Yeah. So you, you were cutting into this thin pieces. Okay, very interesting. But do you think that uh, in the future uh, uh, some model that you have trained could be deployed? uh to the uh, automatic robotic uh, saws uh, for example mascar cnn uh well mascar cnn might be too big but i mean we have all kinds of uh, neural networks uh, running on our cell phones and even on smart watches right so yes. why not equip a, a um, chainsaw with the with the yes yes absolutely and that was and that was also uh, 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 we we were actually planning to implement something like that uh, to to do to take this model and implement it in a, in a uh, in a phone uh, where the phone can uh, take the picture and run this okay. model there. Uh, okay, so not, not the so to yet, but the phone is already good enough. Cool, very interesting. I I enjoyed it a lot. Um, Okay, so I don't think uh, that I, I don't see any questions from the audience. Uh, I, again, uh, before thanking you one last time, I invite 
all of you. Oh, there is a comment from Erasmus. Uh, so before wrapping this uh, broadcast up, I would like to invite everybody to the uh, closing session, which will start uh, in, I guess, 10 minutes. It will be very short, but all of you are invited to cheer the community of fellow Pythonistas. Okay, thanks again for being with us. And uh, so hope to see you on the following PyCons next year. Sure. Thank bye you bye. so much. Bye-bye. Cheers.